Sup? My name is Bernard, and welcome to Weekends with Bernie. I should title this episode Weekends with Dr. Bernie. Earlier this month, the United States Food and Drug Administration released a safety announcement saying that people who were taking the drug Imodium for antidiarrheals, some people were abusing it either to get high or by accident and were dying from it. Now, because this information is publicly available, I hold absolutely no responsibility for what you do with your body after knowing about this. But anyways, what is loperamide? Loperamide, or Imodium here in the United States, is a drug that stops diarrhea. What it does is that it actually works on the muscles in your stomach and in your intestines, because when you have diarrhea, those muscles actually loosen up, because your body's trying to get rid of that waste. And that's why you have that watery waste that comes afterwards. But what it does is loperamide contracts the muscles in your stomach and in your intestines, prevents it from getting released so that then your body can absorb the water from what would be waste, and then produces fully formed poop. Now, the reason that we have loperamide is actually because of morphine. And both of these drugs belong in a class called opiates. I'm sure you are very familiar with morphine and its stronger counterpart, heroin, which is abused very strongly. What opiates do as a whole, they actually all contract your GI muscles, your stomach and your intestines. So when you see a heroin addict, know that they are almost always constipated. Now, the funny thing about loperamide is that it comes in a tablet form, and when you take it, it goes into your stomach and then gets absorbed into your blood. And then from that blood, it goes directly into your liver first, where then it gets broken down. And from the dose that you take, less than 1% actually gets used to contract the muscles in your stomach and your intestines. But now people found out if you take enough of it, it'll still be in your blood, that less than 1%. It'll get into your brain and then you'll feel that high. I can tell you from the chemical structure of loperamide, it's going to be a very shitty high. It has very low activity and it's going to be extremely disappointing and you are going to be constipated to the end of time. Also coupled with the fact the reason for the FDA announcement says that people will be having heart problems when they take too much loperamide. And the way that that works is that the reason that your heart is able to even pump any blood is that it's a muscle. And the way that the muscle works is that there's an electrical conduction signal that has to happen every time your heart beats. When you have too much loperamide in your body, it'll actually prevent that signal from being built correctly. And what you end up with is a bad heart rhythm, potentially your brain won't get any oxygen, and then you die. So how did the FDA even think to write about this? Loperamide is a drug that came out in 1976, and now you can buy it freely on the counter, and that's been that way since 1988. Well, last month, there was a paper written in the Annals of Emergency Medicine, and the title reads this, Loperamide Abuse Associated with Cardiac Dysrhythmia and Death. Let's dissect that title. Loperamide is the drug that we're looking at. Abuse means that you're taking it for a different reason than what it was intended for, and maybe in the wrong amounts associated with cardiac, which is heart. Dysrhythmia means that it's not beating in the correct way, and when that happens, then it could be associated with death. You could actually die in just a few minutes when your heart rhythm is incorrect. So in this report, they write about two cases. The first one was a 24-year-old man who actually had a history of abusing opiates. He it looks like he was going through rehab at the time, and he was taking loperamide in large amounts to offset the withdrawal symptoms. And as you know, any opiate addict is going to have those symptoms. We can explain why in a different video. But when he went to the emergency room, they found six empty boxes of Imodium in his apartment, and his blood concentrations of Imodium was 50 times what it should have been. After he died, they cut him open and they checked out what was going on. They found out that he had water in his brain, he had water in his lungs, his heart was enlarged, and he also had blood clots in his legs. Now, the second case that they found was a 39-year-old man who also had a history of opiate abuse. And in his autopsy, they found that there was 100 times more Imodium in his blood than normal. His brain had water and his heart was enlarged. Also, right before he died, he gasped and he collapsed to the floor, which is consistent with your heart not just stopping, but beating in a way that it shouldn't be. The oxygen doesn't go to your brain, so you pass out. You also stop breathing, and then you die. 
One of the news articles that I found regarding this paper when the news dropped this week was from CNN. And the CNN article read, complications arose not from the opioid ingredient, but from the other ingredients because of what they do to the body and how they act. I would like to go ahead and say to the author of this paper, Deborah Goldschmidt, that that statement is actually incorrect. In the very top of this page, it even said, we described two fatalities in the setting of significantly elevated loperamide concentrations. Not a single word in this paper reads anything about the excipients or the other ingredients of the loperamide formulation that these two people were taking. The news article also read that this was a study. This is not a study. This is a case report. This is just talking about things that the authors had seen in their clinic. There is a difference. And unfortunately, this is an extremely common occurrence when reading about medical topics on news sites like this. So with all of that, this paper finally concludes, action should be taken to regulate the sale of loperamide containing products in a manner similar to that for pseudoephedrine. Here in the US is known as Sudafed, which you cannot buy without giving your ID and having the pharmacy take all of your personal information and that data gets then pushed into a state-contained database. And they track how much you can buy and when you can buy it. I strongly disagree with this statement. The first reason and most important reason being that we are trying to accommodate a few people, meaning these drug abusers, for loperamide, and we are harming the general populace in doing so. We're making it more difficult for them to get the loperamide that they need, which really should just be a convenience for them to get. I'll bet most people watching this video have taken at least a tablet of loperamide in their life. And it drains useful resources that could be used for patient care within a pharmacy. The cost of health care here in the United States has become a national disgrace. Little rules here and there to control a few people at the expense of the majority of people are part of the reason why the costs have become so high. It's not the only reason. But when we put stuff like this in place, it just makes it harder for the regular person to get the things that they need. The system that we have and the control that we impose on the regular person has become a cancer to the society. It prevents people from getting the care that they need when they need it. It's unsustainable and it cannot keep on for that much longer. Suggestions like these to accommodate just a few people, to me, hold no bearing and you ought to know that a small case report provides very little evidence. You ought to know that social media data holds very little bearing on actual medical evidence. Anyways, that's just my opinion. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. I hope you did. Or leave me a comment, or maybe my comment section will prove more as to why social media data is not an accurate representation of medical evidence. And subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Do you amigos like this kind of content? If you do, I'll make more. This is pretty easy for me to do. I can put them in the weekend show or I can make it separate. But uh, be sure to let me know either in the comments or send me a message. Anyways, thanks so much for hanging out with me this weekend. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios, amigos.